Welcome to Ivy's Greenhouse. Today we are going to do spider plants, an indoor house plant. I decided to do this because I have everything that I need to get you all from start to finish on this. I, thanks to my good friend Jerry, I had tons of these little babies here that I had started and I took a bunch into my work. And these are the babies that I got off of my ones at work. So we have everything that we need. These I'm not going to use again today. I'm going to show you from what we have over here. But just to show you how much they repopulate, you can certainly, you know, share these with friends, whatever you need to do, but they go, you know, tons of them from one plant. Um, so like this plant has one, two, three, four. They kicked off of it. There's two different plants in this pot up top, so, and this one's kicking off one already. And a big one here, I'm not sure if you can see that in the screen. No. So, a big one here. But that one I like the way it looks, so I'm just going to leave it. Okay, so easy peasy. What we're going to do is we're going to clip one off. And then this now is your baby. Oh, you know, they also make some pretty flowers. See little white flowers on that one? So they do bloom. They make a tiny bit of a mess, but nothing that, you know, you can't sweep up every couple days. And we're left with this. So what I like to do is cut it off here. I leave a little part of a stick. And then this piece, you're just going to sit in a container of water with the part that comes down like this. You can see the little roots on there are going to want to start. You just sit this in water for a couple of days. Not very long. They go fast. I would say at least a week. So these have been sitting for two weeks. And my results for these are all of those lovely roots. Hopefully you're able to see everything I'm doing. So that's one way to start. What we'll do is I have found these red cups at the dollar store. And all I do is, because they don't have any drainage in the bottom, I take a handful of, this is, um, I pulled this out of a terrarium the kids were attempting to keep, which everything in it died. So this is aquarium rocks, and there's actually some activated charcoal in here. Sometimes you use that just to help if you think it's going to smell. I wouldn't worry about it if it's in a cup like this, but it won't hurt anything. It will help, too, if you have any um, fluoride in your water or anything like that. The activated charcoal may, I, I believe, help kind of filter that out. So I've put up to here in the bottom of the cup about an inch just to give the water somewhere to go to drain the soil so the roots don't end up sitting in the soil. And then we just fill in some soil just to whatever level you like. Um, I find that I use these cups at work so I have like 20 of these at my job. Uh, in this huge windowsill um, for everyone to enjoy. And they also, um, these plants are great to take pollutant out of the air. Um, they release a lot of oxygen at night, so they're very good for your air quality in the room that you're in. Sit one on your desk will help. So I like to leave a little bit of room here because what I found was when I water it, if I just water it to the top of the rim, it seems to be enough for the plant to survive. Um, at work, I've been watering... I work four and then I'm off for ten. So the first day I go back, I give them a, a light watering. And then on the fourth day that I work, I, I fill this up to the top twice and then let it go for ten days. But my work is also very, very dry air. So I feel like most of it evaporates. All right, so I have my roots here and my plant here. I bent my plant back to have the roots sort of exposed. And I'm just going to sit them right down in the dirt and fill them in, I think. Everybody's pretty good with knowing how to plant something, so um, that's all you need to do. I'm going to add a little bit of water. I don't really have anything to add water with with me. Another cup. Just to water it down. Your soil's going to sink, so you might have to come back in a day or two after the soil sort of settled and add a little more around the rim. So you can see there how I've filled it right to the brim, and I'm just going to let it all settle down. 
that soil is dry, so it's going to take a while to settle down. So that's that. And you can use any kind of container you want. This one, I was really small, so I just put it in this little pot. This one I tend to keep in a container that has water in the bottom, so it would basically sit like this. Um, just until it gets going and you feel like the roots are good. This won't happen on your plant. It won't make babies until the plant is actually root bound. Uh, it takes about a year to get babies off of a plant. This is another container I used. Um, once I get another one that looks like this, I'll make another hanging basket. They do beautiful hanging baskets for the little babies that come down. So just this kind of container. Um, all right, so actually I'm going to show you one other way that you can start them. So if you're worried about the whole cutting it off, sitting it in water, and moving it over, there's another way to do it, which is on this plant, you can see I have a much larger, I just let it go longer. I just didn't cut it off as a baby. I just let it grow on the plant longer. And all you need to do for this is you need some kind of whatever pot you're going to want it in. And you can literally leave it attached to the plant. So I'm not cutting on this one. I am not cutting anything. And I am just going to sit this little baby down in the soil like this and close it over with the soil. And then what I hope happens, of course, is that the roots will go right from there and this plant will help to feed this plant in the meantime. My brother does it this way and he said that it worked pretty well for him, but I've actually had this one sitting in here for a couple days. Well, not true, a week or two and it doesn't have a whole lot of roots on it, so I feel like this way takes longer to get roots than just the straight up putting everything in the water pan. Uh, what else should I tell you? So these guys like a little bit of fertilizer in the spring and the summer. I'm gonna fertilize. Um, the books say two times a month, but your leaves will turn brown if, you, if they're too much fertilizer. They'll get tick burn. Also, salt will do that, and also um, chlorine, if you have chlorinated water, will do that. So try to use rainwater if you have city water with chlorine in it. If you do get a little bit of tip burn, obviously this one has some, it's really easy. I'm going to go all the way back to here. You just cut it on an angle and throw it away. The only reason you're cutting it on an angle is to kind of make it match the other ones so it doesn't look like, you know, it's been damaged. It just helps it blend in a bit. And um, water once a week in the summer if, if, it's, if the soil's drying out. In the winter, you can probably water every other week. They don't really need a whole lot of water. Um, they want bright light to moderate light. Like, you don't want to put them in really hot, direct sun. It will burn them. So, like, these I don't put out on my porch because my porch gets a lot of sun in the morning. Um, well, this one's broken. I'm just going to cut it off now. So I don't, um, sometimes I just don't like the way these look and I just cut them off. It doesn't hurt these to do that either. Um, so again, once they're root down, they'll have babies, which are these. You can transplant them at that point if you want, but they really do like to be root bound. This isn't one of those plants that you need to be concerned with. You can see I've got some roots coming out of the bottom of this one, but it also has a baby on it, so it's happy. Unless it starts to look not happy, I would leave it be. So that's your spider plants, indoor house plants. They're one of the easiest ones to do, the easiest ones to propagate. You can make them, give them to your friends for their holidays, and you have a nice little, pretty much free gift. Cup from the dollar store, a little bit of rock, a little bit of soil. You can use rocks out of your driveway, Rocks out of your garden. They don't have to be aquarium rocks. It just happens to be what I have laying around. And that's it, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, tell your friends. Ask your friends for a spider plant. And have a great afternoon. Here's a quick little add-on for the spider plant. The one thing I didn't show you was how to transplant once you are root-bound. So I know we're down close again. I'm sorry about that. But here's my plant. This is what it looks like. It's pretty big. It's kicking babies, so I know that it's root-bound. I'm just going to put it in this little tiny hanging basket. 
it's small about probably six inches tall I've put some this one does have drainage in the bottom which I hate because it's a hanging basket so I just put some aluminum foil in the bottom there to uh, help keep the water from dripping through when I water it so first thing we're gonna do is put our hand here on top to hold the plant still tip it over squeeze a little bit and it comes out so there you can see the roots and how it's pretty root bound in that container and we knew that because well I could see roots from the bottom through the holes in this container but also because it was making babies so it's good to go I'm gonna move it over to a bigger pot so that it looks prettier and it's not in that black pot so what I'm doing over here is I'm just setting it in I know this is really close guys I'm sorry I'm just setting it in See if I do this. Ah, oh, a little better. Okay, so I've put it into the pot like this, and I'm not going to mess with the roots at all. Since they like to be bound, we're going to leave them bound. And then I'm just going to take soil and fill in around the edges of the plant. And we will pack it in there really tight. So I do think now that we've covered everything on the spider plants. I don't think we need to cover anything else. If I think of anything, I'll let you know. Oh, you know what? Maybe I didn't tell you last on the other video was about fertilizing. These guys like to be fertilized once a week. Um, you know, once every two weeks in the spring and the summer. I only do it once a week. If you put too much fertilizer in the plant, we'll let you know the ends of the leaves will turn brown. So if you start to get some tip burn, that's from the brown edges, you know, that's from too much fertilizer. It can also be caused by chlorine in your water, uh, salt in your water, and, um, you're going to want to put this in a bright, moderate location. Don't put them in the direct hot sun because it will also burn the leaf tips. So let me hold this up. And we went from that ugly brown pot to now having a cute little spider plant in a hanging basket with some babies on it. All right, so that's the last thing for the spider plant, guys.